Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we had discussed pulse code modulation. In this lecture, we will be discussing pulse modulation. The process of transmitting signals in the form of pulses by using special techniques is called as pulse modulation. In short, the carrier wave that we are, are using in this modulation technique is actually in the form of pulses or a pulse train. This is our modulating signal. When the amplitude of the pulse varies with respect to the amplitude of the modulating signal, it is called as pulse amplitude modulation. The width, the second waveform indicates that the width of the pulse varies in accordance to the amplitude of the modulating signal. And the third is pulse position modulation. In this case, the, there are two pulses which are indicating the amplitude of the modulating signal. One pulse is at the rising edge of the pulse, that is my carrier, and the second pulse, which is negative, is at the falling edge of the pulse. So this PPM is derived from PWM. The last type is pulse code modulation, which we saw in detail in the last lecture. Pulse modulation is basically divided into analog pulse modulation and digital pulse modulation. Analog pulse modulation is further divided into pulse amplitude modulation that is PAM, pulse width modulation which is called as PWM, pulse position modulation which is called as PPM. Digital pulse modulation is nothing but pulse code modulation, delta modulation, pulse amplitude modulation, the signal is sampled at regular intervals such that each sample is proportional to the amplitude of the signal at that sampling instant. This technique itself is called as sampling. For minimum distortion, usually we take the sampling rate more than twice the signal frequency which is also called as the Nyquist criteria. Now we go into the detail of pulse amplitude modulation. If you see the waveform very carefully, I have a PAM signal that is pulse amplitude modulated signal where the amplitude of the pulses are varying in accordance to the amplitude of my modulating signal. The modulating signal in this figure is indicated or written as M of T, whereas the PAM signal is denoted as S of T. Please see very carefully, here the duration of the pulse is capital T, whereas the rate at which the signal has been sampled is Ts, that is the sampling interval is T suffix S. Now since we have denoted our PAM signal as S of T and the top of the pulse is flat, that's why this is also called as the flat top signal. Now, S of t is nothing but summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity m of nts h of t minus nts. It means that I have my input signal as my modulating signal, my impulse response as h of t and the output of it I get it as summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity m of nts h of t minus nts. It means that it is an output of a system where the input and the impulse response have been convolved. So it's as good as y of t is equal to x of t convolving with h of t. Now the, uh, if I have to talk about an ideal sampling, if m of t is instantaneously sampled, then it is m delta of t which we had seen in the last lecture, m delta of t is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity, m of nts delta of t minus nts, where my modulating signal was multiplied with the comb function. So m delta of t is nothing but ideal sampling equation, which is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity, m of nts delta of t minus nts. And hence, m delta of t is convolving with h of t so that we can get the output of the system. So m delta of t convolving with h of t gives me integral minus infinity to infinity m delta of tau h of t minus tau d tau. 
this is nothing but the expression of convolution integral. So this comes out to be as integral minus infinity to infinity summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity m of n t s delta of tau minus n t s h of t minus tau d tau. I have simply substituted m delta of tau over here from the above equation. Okay. Now since m of n t s and summation have nothing to do with integration, that's why we have taken it outside. It is summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity m of nts. So what we are left with inside is nothing but integral minus infinity to infinity delta of tau minus nts h of t minus tau d tau. Now using the shifting property of an impulse function, integral minus infinity to infinity delta of tau minus n t s h of t minus tau d tau reduces to h of t minus n t s. We know that if we have a shifted impulse function and we integrate it with any other signal, it will take the value of the impulse at that instant that is n t s. That's why this reduces to h of t minus nts and that's why it results in m delta of t convolving with h of t is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity m of nts h of t minus nts. The PAM signal s of t is nothing but m delta of t convolving with h of t. Now if you take the Fourier transform of this, s of t Fourier transform is s of f m delta of t Fourier transform is f m delta of f Fourier transform of h of t is h of f. Convolution in time domain results in multiplication of their individual spectra in the frequency domain. That's why we get the expression s of f is equal to m delta of f h of f. Now we know that from sampling theorem if we sample a signal in the time domain in the frequency domain it results in the spectrum of the modulating signal and the spectrum repeated at multiples of the sampling frequency. Therefore, m delta of f can be written as fs summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity m of f minus k fs. It means that the frequency spectrum of this is going to be m of f and m of f repeated at plus or minus fs, plus or minus twice fs, plus or minus thrice fs and so on. And therefore, S of F is equal to Fs summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity M of F minus Kfs multiplied with H of F. Now, how do we recover the original message signal M of T, that is my modulating signal, from the PAM signal? The PAM signal S of T at the receiver side is given to the reconstruction filter. The reconstruction filter is band limited to the bandwidth of the message signal. So in this case, the filter bandwidth is W. The output of this reconstruction filter is further given to the equalizer. The equalizer's frequency response is always going to be the reciprocal of the frequency response of the filter of the reconstruction filter. And hence, at the output of the equalizer, we get our message signal. Now, the filter input, that is, the input to the reconstruction filter is S of F is equal to Fs summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity m of F minus k Fs h of F. The output of this filter, since the filter is band limited to W, will come out to be as Fs m of F h of F since it is band limited to W. All other spectral components will be attenuated. So only the first term exists and the rest of the terms are filtered out. So the filter output becomes Fs, M of F, H of F. Note that the frequent Fourier transform of H of T is H of F. Now since I am saying my H of T is a rectangular function, then the Fourier transform of a rectangular function is a sink function. Rectangle and the sink function form a Fourier transform pair. Therefore, h of f is equal to t sink of f of t e raised to minus j pi f t. This is the Fourier transform of h of t that is a rectangular function. 
Now, T sink F of T represents amplitude distortion. Whereas, E raised to minus J pi F T represents the delay by T by 2. This together is called as an aperture effect. Now, the equalizer response is 1 upon HF. That is 1 upon T sink F of T. And thus, as H of F and 1 upon H of F cancel each other, at the output, what we are left with is only M of T. And hence, the message signal is recovered completely. So, this is nothing but PAM and the aperture effect that we have seen in PAM. Now, we come to the other forms of pulse modulation. The other forms of pulse modulation are pulse duration modulation, pulse position modulation. Pulse position modulation has a similar noise performance as FM. Now, if we have to talk about pulse width modulation, pulse width modulation is also called as pulse length modulation or pulse duration modulation. In this type, the amplitude of the pulse is maintained constant, but the duration or the length or the width of each pulse is varied in accordance with the instantaneous value of the modulating signal. The negative side of the signal is brought to the positive side by adding a fixed DC voltage. This is my modulating signal or analog signal and this is my width modulated pulses. Next we come to pulse position modulation. In this type of modulation, the sampled waveform has a fixed amplitude and a fixed width. Whereas, the position of each pulse is varied as per the instantaneous value of the analog signal. Pulse position modulation signal is further modification of pulse width modulation actually. It has positive thin pulses, zero time or zero width, corresponding to the starting edge of a PWM pulse and negative thin pulses corresponding to the ending or the falling edge of a pulse. So here you have actually pulse width modulation and from pulse width modulation, pulse width modulation is, pulse position modulation is derived. So if you see very carefully, this zero width pulse is coming from the rising edge of the pulse and this is coming from the falling edge of the pulse. So this tells me, this position tells me how much is the value, instantaneous value of the analog signal over here. Similarly, over here, if you see the second pulse, this is my rising edge, this is my falling edge. So, it tells me how much is the instantaneous value of the signal. This is nothing but pulse position modulation. This wave can be further amended by eliminating the whole positive narrow pulses and the remaining pulse will then be called as clip PPM. Now we will see PAM, PWM and PPM at one glass, glance. So this is my analog signal. This is my amplitude modulated pulses that is PAM. This is my PWM, pulse width modulation. And this is my PPM, position modulated pulses or pulse position modulation.